thank you for showing up to this emergency meeting of the Georgia chapter of Ladies Instituting a Republican Senate. Now, I've asked you here to decide what to do about this Herschel Walker mess before the midterms. You know, I've always been a defender of Herschel, bless his heart. Yes, the poor thing speaks in random assortments of sometimes recognizable words, but that makes it very clever of Mr. Trump to have picked him. If the libs can't figure out what Herschel just said, it makes it almost impossible to be sure it was a lie. In fairness, Herschel Walker is not the stupidest or most dishonest candidate Georgia has ever run. After all, Marjorie Trailer Green doesn't have decades of football concussions to explain away the nonsense that reflexively vomits out of her always open mouth. But Democrats are trying to undermine him anyway, and they are using their most pernicious weapon, facts, and facts most satanic ally, evidence. So... Let's whip up a plausibility-adjacent response to the seemingly awkward spectacle of a staunchly anti-abortion candidate leaving behind at least one check to pay for one. I like hypocrites who aren't sloppy. First, let's just claim the FBI planted that fetus in this alleger's womb. Next, we attack her for inconveniencing us with evidence. Remember, Republicans' first rule on abortion is always blame the mother. We also have to deal with Herschel's loudmouth, sassy son. He attacked his father for being a family values hypocrite because he abandoned his children. It's adorable that he thinks being a hypocrite would be a problem for conservative Christians. We staunchly support Donald Family Values Trump, who abandoned his children to run off with one of his mistresses when his kids were 13, 9, and 6. Okay, but we can't come out and say that, so... Just remind everyone that Christian Walker hates gay men, almost to the point of not being one. And who are voters going to believe anyway? Kellyanne Conway or Herschel's wife, his girlfriends, his bank accounts, his glib hallmark card, his own Republican son, and his well-documented history of lying about, well, absolutely everything. Besides, what we're doing isn't technically lying. It's pretending to believe someone else who is lying, a distinction upon which Jesus and I have agreed to disagree. Or at least I have. Next, we need to go through the five magic steps of Christian political absolution. They make any hypocrisy or sin instantly disappear. One, a conservative Christian gets caught, whether it was for stealing, lying, killing, or having an athletic romp with a hunky stroke from an Ivy League crew team in a motel off of Highway 91. Wow, that came out a little more specific than I intended. <clears throat> Two, we claim the cock Christian invoked the incantation. Lord, please forgive me. Three, luckily, the libs never hear God actually say no. Four, so the caught Christian announces, my invisible Lord just silently forgave me in secret, y'all, so abracadabra, just like magic, that thing I was caught doing is now irrelevant. Checkmate and LOL, secularists. Five, go back to number one. Yes, it's odd that the only person Herschel asked to forgive him was God, as God can't even vote in Georgia. Even stranger that he would claim God forgave him for an abortion he said never happened. Such a mess, which is probably why Jesus never thought abortion was worth mentioning, even once. So, in a strange way, Herschel's supporters refusing to mention the one he paid for is as close to acting like Jesus as most will ever get glory. Herschel Walker was pro-getting abortions, which we hate, so we must forgive him. Hunter Biden was pro-getting money, which we love, so we must jail him. As you can see, Walker has placed us in a tricky position, so we need to... Be a bit, let's say, limber when it comes to our anti-abortion absolutism. No abortions, no exceptions. Unless we pretend it never happened. I know, I've told you before that Christian nationalists want politicians to run and rule on their religious beliefs. But if a Republican like Herschel Walker transgresses those deeply held beliefs, we need to perform a slight 180-degree pivot for victory. 
we suddenly say, he is running to be a politician, not a pastor. Of course, once he gets elected as a politician, he damn well better go back to legislating like a pastor. So our revised abortion rule until November is women who pay for abortion should go to jail. Men who pay for abortions should go to Congress because we need to use this person who chose abortion to help us get a nationwide ban on other people having that same choice. As conservative Christians, I think we can learn so much from Herschel to keep our temporarily flexible approach to abortion straight. On the one hand, we want to put everyone in jail if they pay for an abortion. On the other hand, Herschel Walker should be left alone if he paid for one, because your abortion is not an issue between you and your doctor. It's our business whereas Herschel Walker's abortion is an issue between him and his God, and not your business. Confused? Well, let me explain. Well, we say we find abortion morally repugnant, and there are no exceptions. Apparently, we are willing to make one exception. Not if the life of the mother is at stake, but if the balance of the Senate is. Glory!